All right, so check this out. The FBI isn't just kicking down doors and chasing bad guys in ski masks down dark alleys anymore. Nah, man, the game has changed. We're talking about a whole new battlefield, a digital one, where the criminals are phantoms in the machine. These guys are operating across digital borders, using tools that sound like they're straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's a constant cat and mouse game, a high stakes chess match played out in ones and zeros. They're not just reacting to cyber attacks, they're proactively hunting these hackers. It's wild when you think about the capabilities they have at their disposal. We're talking about sifting through mountains of data, cracking encryption, and tracking individuals across the globe. The level of sophistication is mind boggling. So in this video, we're gonna pull back the curtain a bit. We're diving deep into 10 actual, real deal tools that agencies like the FBI are using right now. This isn't just about catching criminals. It's about understanding the cutting edge of cybersecurity and surveillance. It's fascinating, a little terrifying, but absolutely crucial to understand in the world we live in today. Let's dive in and see what kind of heat the feds are packing. So, first up on the list is a name that, if you've been paying attention to privacy and surveillance debates, you've probably heard X Key Score. This thing is legendary, man, mostly because of Edward Snowden. He's the guy who blew the whistle and told the world this monster exists. Originally, it's an NSA tool, a mass surveillance program that's designed to hoover up just about everything you can imagine that happens on the internet. We're talking global internet data, emails, your browsing history, what you're yapping about on social media, chats, you name it. And the kicker, it can supposedly do this in real time. Think about that for a second. Real-time access to that much information. It's like having a search engine, a super-powered Google, but instead of just indexing public websites, it's indexing. All right, next up, we've got something that sounds like it's straight out of a spy movie. Stingrays, or as they're technically known, IMSI catchers. These things are pretty damn clever and also a bit creepy if you think about it too much. Essentially, a Stingray is a portable device that pretends to be a legitimate cell phone tower. Your phone, always looking for the strongest signal, sees this powerful tower nearby and boom, it connects to it thinking it's just talking to Verizon or a TAN DT. But it's not. It's talking to the FBI. Once your phone is connected to the Stingray, the agents operating it can do a bunch of things. They can pinpoint your phone's location with incredible accuracy, way better than just general tower triangulation. They can also intercept metadata, like who you're calling or texting. And depending on the sophistication of the device, and the legal authorizations they have, some models can potentially intercept the content of your calls and messages. Now let's talk about Palantir. This is a name that comes up a lot when you're discussing big data analysis, especially in government and intelligence circles. Palantir isn't just one specific tool in the way a hammer is a tool. It's more like a super sophisticated software platform that's designed to make sense of massive, complex data sets. And when I say massive, I mean it. Think about all the digital footprints a person leaves. Emails, bank transactions, social media posts, travel records, phone call logs, IP addresses, website visits. The list goes on and on. Palantir's whole reason for existing is to take all these disparate pieces of information, often from completely different sources, and help analysts find the hidden connections, the patterns, the relationships that a human being, or even standard database software, would just completely miss. All right, this next one is some serious cloak and dagger James Bond level stuff. We're talking about NSO Group's Pegasus spyware. Now, NSO Group is an Israeli company, and Pegasus is marketed as a tool for governments to combat terrorism and serious crime. This isn't your average computer virus, man. This is military-grade spyware, some of the most sophisticated stuff out there. It's designed to infect smartphones, iPhones, Androids, you name it, and it can often do it silently without the user ever clicking on a dodgy link or downloading a suspicious file. Zero-click exploits, they call them. Once Pegasus is on a phone, it's game over for privacy. It can reportedly gain access to pretty much everything on the device. We're talking microphone access, so it can listen in on conversations. So not every tool the FBI uses is some super-secret, billion-dollar NSA program or military-grade spyware. Sometimes it's about using publicly available information in really smart ways. That's where a tool like Maltego comes in. Maltego is all about OSINT, which stands for Open Source Intelligence. 
Basically, it's about gathering information that's already out there in the public domain. Websites, social media, domain registration records, forum posts, news articles, you name it, and then connecting the dots. What Maltego does, and it does it really well, is it helps investigators visualize relationships between different pieces of information. All right, let's say the FBI has identified a hacker maybe through some of the methods we've already talked about, and they've managed to seize their devices, their computer, their tablet, and crucially, their smartphone. Now what? These devices are often locked, encrypted, and the hacker might have even tried to wipe them clean. That's where tools like Celebrite come into play. Celebrite is a name that's pretty much synonymous with mobile device forensics. They are one of the go-to companies for law enforcement agencies worldwide when it comes to extracting data from phones. Celebrite's technology is designed to get into locked phones. And yes, that includes iPhones, which are known for their security. So we've talked about Celebrite for getting into phones. But there's another big player in that space, especially when it comes to cracking Apple devices. And that's a company called Grayshift with their product, Gray Key. Now, iPhones are notoriously tough nuts to crack, that's for sure. Apple puts a lot of effort into their security, and for good reason. But law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, often find themselves needing to get into iPhones seized from suspects. And that's where Gray Key comes into the picture. It's become one of the go-to tools for this specific challenge. Gray Key is a small, unassuming box, but don't let its size fool you. We've talked about getting into devices, and sifting through databases. But what about watching the data flowing across networks? Traffic analysis tools are crucial for the FBI to understand cyber attacks, where they came from, and where they were going. Think of it like detectives looking for footprints. In the digital world, network traffic is those tracks. Tools like NetFlow or platforms like Splunk collect and analyze network traffic data. NetFlow captures metadata about traffic flows who's talking to whom, what ports they're using, how much data is being sent, for how long. Splunk ingests and analyzes machine-generated data, including network logs. FBI analysts use these tools to spot suspicious patterns. Now this is where things get a little bit like setting a trap in the digital wilderness. The FBI doesn't just react to attacks, sometimes they go on the offensive in a defensive way by using honeypots. A honeypot in cybersecurity terms is a decoy system. It's a computer, a server, a network, or even a piece of software that's intentionally designed to look like a legitimate and potentially vulnerable target. The goal is to attract and trap hackers, or at least to study their methods without putting real systems at risk. The FBI can set up these honeypots, often using virtual machines so they're easy to deploy and reset, and make them look enticing to cyber criminals. Maybe it's a system that appears to be part of a financial institution, or a government network, or a database full of juicy but fake information. When hackers, who are constantly scanning the internet for vulnerable targets, stumble upon one of these honeypots, they think they've hit the jackpot. They start probing it, trying to break in, and if they're successful, they start interacting with it. Finally, let's talk about what happens when the FBI seizes a computer, a hard drive, a USB stick, or any other digital storage device from a suspected hacker. They can't just boot it up and start clicking around. That would alter evidence and make it inadmissible in court. They need specialized tools to perform a proper digital forensic examination. And that's where comprehensive suites like Encase from OpenText and FTK, Forensic Toolkit from Xtero, come in. These are considered the gold standards in the field. These forensic suites are incredibly powerful. They allow investigators to create a bit-for-bit -bit forensic image, an exact copy, of the original storage media. This is crucial because all analysis is done on the copy, leaving the original evidence pristine and untouched. Once they have this image, tools like Encase and FTK can dive deep into the data, way beyond what you'd see with a normal operating system. They can recover deleted files, analyze file slack space, where fragments of old files might linger, examine the Windows registry or similar system logs on other OSEs, and carve out data fragments that might not even be part of a recognizable file anymore. The FBI's toolkit in the fight against cybercrime is serious. From mass surveillance to phone cracking devices and data analysis platforms, the digital world isn't lawless. Even advanced cybercriminals leave a trail. It might be faint, but it's there. 
the resources to trace digital footprints are formidable. Anonymity online is thinner than many believe. If you're engaging in cybercrime, the odds of getting caught are high. Always stay on the right side of the law 